Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, so happy to be here uh, this morning in the California. Um, so today's uh, topic uh, here is part of the the ongoing the pit instruction uh, from the Dzogchen tradition. Um, it's particularly it's a little bit more based on my own experiences and reflections. So it's not like a, I am particularly based on one text or like that. But this is the um, just a reflection of my own for all these years. Uh, so so the. The title here today is Being the Mirror, Not the Reflection. So, Being the Mirror and Not Reflection. I think let's just uh, uh, for a moment just contemplate on that. Being the Mirror, Not a Reflection. Um, according to uh, Dzogchen tradition, there, there is a notion of five wisdom. So the mirror-like wisdom is one of the five wisdom. And usually when we think about wisdom, wisdom is uh, cognition or wisdom is the awareness of the truth, uh, awareness of the fact. So there's a different awarenesses of the facts or different aspect of uh, um, awareness of the fact, which will be one, it will be the mirror-like wisdom. So. And in that context, uh, wisdom is like uh, being the mirror, not the reflection. So if you look at that in our everyday experiences in our life, so just let's simply uh, look at that this moment in our life, okay? Um, let's just for a moment, uh, just calm down, breathe deep. Bring your awareness in your body. Feel some connection of the silence, connection to the silence. Stay our heart open. And let's reflect in our life this moment. Are you a mirror or are you a reflection and images in the mirror this moment in your life? Are you the one who is accommodating everything, every experiences, every thought, every emotions, every feelings? or even conflicts, challenges, even threats? Are you the one who is accommodating, being aware of it? Or are you that threat? Are you that pain? Are you that emotion? Are you that challenge? Are you that meeting, event? Are you that conflicted discussion. So just for a moment, I want everybody to reflect that on a very personal level, on a very current, this moment in your life. We are simply talking about us, you, this moment, I repeat the question again, are you a mirror or reflection in a mirror, which means are you a one who is hosting 
accommodating all the experiences that you are having in your life. Challenge, pain, joy, pleasure, pleasant, all the experiences. Are you, are you your stories? Are you that clear screen? Are you all those movies or are you that a light through which the movie is projected? So if you look at that, that question, a very simple question, and how do we know? How we know is if you feel threat, that means you cannot, you feel that you cannot overcome the challenge. If you're feeling threat and pain, confused, lost, angry, upset, you're ready to react through your confusion and pain, then, then it's a very good chance, almost 99%, 100%, that you are being a story, you are being image, you are being that reflection, but not the mirror. So, clearly, this sense of mirror-like wisdom or even similar to mirror-like wisdom, quality, experiences, is not happening in you right now, in this moment. There is no mirror-like wisdom. There is probably no wisdom there. Or if you are feeling that you are able to host your experiences, even though they are challenging, painful, It, you, you feel that you're not identifying with those events, pain, challenges. You feel free from those events, challenges and pain. You feel indestructible from those situations, not threat. You feel playfulness in those situations that you feel that you can guide the event and situation, one, one direction, other direction, the direction that you want or the direction that universe is guiding it or the direction that the circumstances is needed, direction which is the collective purpose, which direction, direction that which serves the collective pur purpose, not individual egoistic pain's purpose, then there is a good chance there is this little sense of a wisdom or mirror-like wisdom is there. Once again, I am not really talking about a dry philosophy. I'm not talking about very specific texts. I am talking about the essence of Dzogchen teaching and context of fi among five wisdom and one only one wisdom so-called mirror-like wisdom. And I am only talking that in, in, a, in relation to your own experiences of life, not theories that you trying to think a lot in your head, but an experience that you are going through this moment in your life does the mirror-like wisdom make any sense in the experience that you are going through in your life this moment? This mirror-like wisdom is sometimes translated as uh, uh, the mirror-like cognition, sometimes it's translated as a mirror-like awareness. I think I like the idea of mirror-like awareness. It's, it's not like a knowing something very specific, it's more like a, a sense of being open, aware, and able to accommodate openly, host it openly, without getting so much identified, trapped, 
confused, angry with your experiences. You are not what you possess. You are not what you think. You are not what you do. You are definitely not your pain. But these experiences are simply there in our life. That's called life. It's good to have those experiences. It, it means you are alive. If you're not having any of these experiences, the experience that you're having now, good chance you're dead. Especially when it's not happening in your life, in the, in the moment, in your body. Then it's like a dead. So, as I'm asking this question, I want all of your feedback since uh, our um, wonderful this Facebook uh, technology allows. What do you feel? The answers for my question. Are you mirror or are you reflection? Are you the one who is accommodating, hosting all of your experiences or, or are you lost connection to the host? You become one of your experiences and then your tendency to choose one bad one, one painful one. Can you see that? distinction. If you are able to be aware of that and able to see the distinction distinction there, now can you separate that yourself from your event? Because if you are mirror in mirror, there so many things are accommodated. But if you are only one ugly image in the mirror, then you are lost. You are lost the sense of the non-judgmental non aspect of yourself, non-grasping aspect, aspect of yourself, uh, able to host and welcome everything, anything in your uh, self. You lose those deep strength and potentiality. You become one ugly image in the mirror. Obviously, it's very, it's clear. Do you? If somebody asks you, do you want it to be a mirror, which, without judging, without grasping, without chasing, it's able to accommodate and host every appearances. Do you want it to be that? Or do you want it to be one single image, or particularly one single ugly image in the mirror? Do you want it to be that? What would be your question? Answer. Obviously, it's clear you want it to be mirror. So, in the moment situations in your life, this very moment, are you being the mirror? Are you being aware of that non judgmental? boundless space awareness or are you getting caught up in one single ugly image in that mirror do you see your ability to to host accommodate observe guide transform but not affected, not destroyed by those images, stories. Where does that strength come from? That strength comes from awareness, which is called, in this case, a mirror-like wisdom. It's a very, as, as, a simple uh, concept, I think, and I think it's a very beautiful, then when you begin to have glimpses of experiences of that in your life, particularly in the moment when you are losing that wisdom, mirror-like wisdom quality. I always sometimes give an example of like imagine 
that particularly like those who we are who are like helping as teachers and therapists, mentors, um, healers, doctors, uh, people who are really on every day-to-day -day basis that you are encountering other people's suffering, something that you wanted to get engaged and wanted to help, something that professionally that you, are, you, that you have to engage also if you, regardless of you don't want some days. Especially when you don't want to get engaged some days, you need to be more mirror-like wisdom. Probably the mirror-like wisdom is one of the, uh, it's like a most uh, strong uh, uh, a protection, protector. So it it. It really like uh, helps you to protect yourself while you're in the process of helping somebody, a mother trying to help a child. A family trying to help each other. A child trying to help aging, dying parents. A therapist trying to help a patient, difficult patients. In those situations, we all need a protection. The protection is to be, be like a mirror, not the reflection. So, if you are like a mirror-like wisdom, What is the cost of some of the quality? Some of the very important quality will be um, non judgmental. Mirror never judges. Ne mirror never grasps. So let's think about this two specific quality non -jud judgmental, which is through analysis, but also not grasping like a glue holding on something. Non-judgmental. So basically think about, you know, I sometimes give example of in like airport, you know, since I travel a lot in the airport, if you see there's a public bathroom, there's a mirror. Somebody who's traveling 24 hours and sh totally exhausted, like a, looks like a ghost, and shows up in the, into the public toilet and looking into the mirror, even it scares you who that person is, right? Do you think you're scaring the mirror? No. Mirror is just allowing you to be who you are. Not a conceptual sense of respect, but the deep, ultimate sense of respect mirror has. It allows you to be who you are. And you are the one who has little problem with the appearance of yourself in the mirror. What do you do? You wash, you clean, you, whatever you're trying to uh, fix yourself up. And then, then you think, what about now? I, do I look okay? And then maybe you begin to think about, okay, well, it's acceptable. I look fine. I look good. Does mirror, is, does mirror says, yes, you're right. Now you look much better than before. Or worse will be mirror saying, wow, you looked much better before, even though it, you know, you're tired, but now you look like, a, I don't know, not good. No, mirror will not say any of those things. Mirror simply allows to you to be. On the other hand, imagine the effect. If mirror get affected by every bad mood individual shows up in that room in front of the mirror, self-critical, self-judgmental, uh, unpleased with oneself, always think about uh, low self-stream, 
not think about good of oneself, not think about the worth, worthiness of oneself, comes up with some sense of bad mood and complaining in front of the mirror, thousands of them pass through the mirror. Do you think mirror get really very badly affected? Mirror's health, mirror's well-being, does mirror get sick? Does mirror get really, I hate to see all, all these people stop coming into the bathroom. Do you think Miro will say those things? No. Because Miro is Miro. So, if you look at yourself, can we be a little bit like a mirror like that? Be the mirror, not the reflection. Be the host, but not the event. Be the processor of healer of the pain, not the pain. Be the source of solution, not the conflict. Be the source of strength, not the weakness, appearance of weakness. Because in experientially, just stepping back a little bit those moments, you begin to feel, you begin to feel some sense of separation, or distinction or dis that I am this boundless space. I am the host. I accommodate. So if I, I if I feel I am the host, if I feel I am a good host, if I feel I am accommodating, if I feel I allow my appearances, if I feel my appearances, since they are not me, so therefore they are not affecting me, there, if that is true, then every single appearance in the mirror is called ornament. In Tibetan Dzogchen tradition, we say Jie. Rolpa. They are like an ornament. They are ornament of mirror. Mirror is, you know mirror is mirror, its ability to reflect appearances. The characteristic of mirror. So if when you are a great host, when you don't judge by influence, by negativity of appearances, then you are a good host. Imagine you are having a party in your house and you are inviting all kinds of people and maybe some friends bring another friend that you even don't know or maybe some friend brings the per somebody that you really wish they don't bring the person there. What will be your reaction or what you would like to be how you wanted to respond to that? Of course you wanted to be, don't want to mess up the party at your home. You wanted to be a good host. You want to be a good host means you don't want to do uh, only be nice to people that you like, you invited, and not be nice to people who showed up and, and mean to be people who you don't, you don't want them to be there, but they showed up anyway. And that will not be a good host. Of course, if even simple logically, somebody just shows up in your home, it's very thoughtful thing to do, even though you don't like it, just to be be ho good host. So our life is like that. You are you are that mirror, and uh, so more and more we are if we are able to live like mirror like wisdom with that awareness, hosting it. Okay. So let's uh, do a short meditation here, a uh, short meditation on mirror-like wisdom, a uh, short meditation on something similar to mirror-like wisdom. Some of you might understand fully what that means, some of you might not understand what that means, but at least we have a good sense of what that, that would, uh, that means. So, so let's just try to uh, focus for a moment. Um so sit sit comfortably
as always, bring your attention to your body, bring your attention to your speech, bring your attention to your mind. That means bring attention to your body means feeling the stillness in your body. Feel the stillness in your body. Feel the silence in your speech or just feel the silence around and within. Feel the openness in your heart. So your heart and mind is open, your speech, you're feeling silence, your body is feeling the stillness. So this stillness silence, spaciousness, helping you to be the mirror. Be the mirror. Be like an unbounded crystal clear sky. Be this huge universal mirror or be that unbounded crystal clear sky. Feel that way, allow to be that way. If there is a resistance, disconnectedness, be aware of them, breathe it out, allow it. Say, I allow to be the mirror. I allow to be that boundless crystal clear sky. And rest there for a moment. And also feel that the cyber sangha, we are all supporting each other. This is very important that over 300 people are participating right now that 
we are participating right now, and particularly those who are more truly engaged in being here with us, just feel that presence of each other in each other's meditation. The connection. It's there. And through that connection, we are supporting each other. I feel all of your support. And I am supporting all of you. You are not alone. I am not alone. We are connected. Feel that power of that connection, the blessing of that connection, the joy of that connection, support of that connection. Continuously be the mirror. And now you look at in your life Things you feel threatened by, challenged by, confused by, angry at somebody, endless stories in your head, deeply stuck in pain, loss in actions, busyness, All of these are simply just an experience, like a reflections in the mirror. They are not mirror, they are not you, they are simply your experience. And see that very clearly that you are not them, you are this boundless sky, accommodating storms, earthquake, rains, rainbows, events, arising of the universe, dissolving of the universe. You're accommodating all of them. Feel that you are that boundless awareness like a mirror. Feel that distinctions. You, being that mirror of the universe, you being that unbounded, crystal clear sky, cannot be affected, destroyed by appearances in the sky or by reflections in the mirror or by experiences in your life. You cannot be affected. That changeless, eternal, indestructible wisdom. Feel that. Be aware of that. And see these appearances that you can leave it, leave them as they are. You do have being 
a power to be playful, power to guide them, because you are not them. Recognize that for a moment. These experiences are arising there in the mirror or in the sky, in the base of all in yourself. They stay there and they liberate there. Countless experiences in the past and countless experiences are happening in the moment and this is nothing that countless experiences will come in the future. These are experiences, not you. Be free from them. They are like your ornament, that what makes you be the sky, what makes you be the mirror, what makes you be that unbounded space and awareness. When you are in that mirror, you don't leave any traces. When you are in that awareness, mirror-like awareness, you don't leave any traces. You are free from every experience that you are having any moment. You are free. Okay. You can open your eye. So, how was your meditation? Are you mirror or reflection in the mirror? Do you feel that you are like a mirror? You're like that sky, you're like a mirror, like a mirror of universe. You're like that boundless sky, all the weathers are happening but not affected by sky, sky itself. All these experiences that are happening, you can see they are not you. You are a good host. So, no matter what appears, you should not worry so much. Not worry at all. So, now my question to you is, theoretically, mirror-like wisdom, okay, makes sense. Being the mirror, awareness of the mirror-like wisdom awareness, but not the, uh, the, the images. But in experience, my, my main question to you all, it's your experience of this meditation or if you, what you're trying to hear from me and what you're trying to understand from me, do you, can you make, can you separate yourself from those challenges, from those threats, from those pains, from that events, from those stories, from those People, can you separate from yourself? You are not them. You are simply a great host, a great mother to all of them. So, so does it, is it making sense?
Yeah, so I know, um, um, yeah, beautiful meditation. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sometime I can do it. Yes, that's true. Nobody can do it all the time. But at least if sometime you can do it, that means it's a clear sign that you can do it. That means you can do more frequently. And that means you can do when absolutely necessary that you do need to do it. That's important to recognize. You are the witness, your experiences is the witness of that it can be done. It can be experienced, that it can be realized. But not to make it this ancient teaching so theoretical, so dry, and, uh, and, and just think about the value of only intellectual understanding. And now there's a lot of artificial intelligence and computers and so on. I mean, in terms of the knowing something as information somewhere in your head, or is the same thing like having something in the cloud, in a Google Cloud. But unless these, what you know, it does not, unless this becomes more experiences in your life, and it's able to manifest the moment that you are, really need to manifest to understand it, unless that happens, otherwise it's just simple information, and the simple information is no longer that important. Because, you know, I mean, when we were growing up, we, we've memorized a lot of things, many, 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 many pages. Of course, great, it's fine. Would I memorize again like that? No, I will not. I would, I would try to bring this teaching more alive, more here, more that I feel effect and shift in me, myself, around me, able to see some of these shift and changes, not only me, but in other memorizing informations, repeating informations, without any, sometimes not even having a really clue about what has been repeated. So I think it's very important that I hope this little meditation was meaningful, helpful. At least clearly my intentions are there. So thank you. And uh, now, you know, I, I, I try to keep these things uh, regular. Uh, I, I really apologize and feel sorry I, I was not able to keep up the last couple of months. Uh, and um, so I'm not going to promise to say every week I'm going to do the Facebook Live because uh, I will be traveling uh, tomorrow and uh, and the next couple of months, most of the time, I will be uh, spending time with my wife and my son. Uh, as you all know, Nsinghe is uh, going to school in TCV, in Dharamsala, so we'll be spending most time around there. And um, and um, he, is, he is doing wonderful, he's doing great, and he is very adjusted now there. And um, yeah, so we are very happy with the move, even though it was a little challenging in the beginning. So anyway, so thank you very much. So I will do this Facebook Live when I know that I can do and maybe let uh, announce it like this time a uh, few days before and I will just say I'm going to do it two days later or three days later when I know I will be in a place where there is internet connection and and not only internet connection, the energy there but also when I feel that I do have energy and inspiration to do that. I just wanted to, uh, I will let everybody know. Thank you so much and uh, all the best wishes, my prayers, my love to all of you.